All right. Well, let's get into our message this morning. This will be the second of the, well, five messages that I'm going to preach for Christmas. Last week we preached on a thrill of hope. We found out who that hope was, that is Christ Jesus. The title of the message this morning is, God will be born to us, a son will be given to us. And as we go through this hook to, to make a way to reconcile us back unto you, Father God. So I pray now, Lord, that you would open our ears, see this, and listen to it on Facebook and YouTube. Father God, I pray from the title itself before I get into the scripture. God and sinner reconciled. Who is involved in that title? Good. Why do you want to put that word out there that I'm just a sinner saved by grace? Because words have effects. If you say, I'm a sinner saved by grace, well, the next time you get tempted and the next time you think about doing something or you sin, you're going to play on the fact that God is gracious and there are people who take advantage of God's grace. There are people who believe that they can do anything they want as long as they ask for forgiveness over it. That's not necessarily how it works. Will God forgive? Yes, if your heart is true and you've repented. But we have become desensitized to this word sinner. So let's look at some different words this morning that might go with that, that might help you understand the love of God that he wants to reconcile you. How about violator? God and violator reconciled. Have you ever thought that you violated God in some way? Probably not. How about wrongdoer? God, which we all admit, were all those other words up there that we don't like. And then it says we're imputed from Adam to all of us. Now this is where Thomas, if he'll put up Ephesians 5, 12. Do you have that one? Huh? Well, that's, oh, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Romans 5.12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, the death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. You see, we sin, one, because we want to. We sin because it is our nature. It has been imputed to us from Adam. What does that word mean? This is your day for synonyms and thesauruses. But it means attributed to. It means ascribed to you. It means credited to you. It means to be designated to you, assigned to you, imposed and charged to you. You see, sin has been, because of Adam, the first Adam, sin has been imputed to each and every one of us. And because of that, Every person born since Adam has been destined for hell without intervention from God. Now, we don't like it because we have people that will say, well, how could a loving God send me to hell or send you to hell? Well, quite frankly, he doesn't do it. You did it yourself. You do it yourself. He has provided a way because of his gracious and merciful love for you. But without it, we see a great light in Christ. We see the darkness of God's promises in our life. We should have faith in Christ. You can be reconciled with God and find purpose. Nothing that you've done is so bad that you can't be reconciled to God. We must embrace the Prince of Peace. We must strive to embody the principle of peace in our interactions, and in our relationships. We need to seek reconciliation where we can and understand this. We need to reflect the attributes of Christ in our daily life. We need to embrace the Prince of Peace. When we've done those, we need to cultivate a spirit of hope this morning. We must allow the promises of God to instill in our hearts this hope. No matter what, we can do this 
because we can share what God has done for us through his son, Christ Jesus, on the cross of Calvary. And so this morning, as we wrap this up, does anybody here need to reconcile themselves for God? This is Christmas. It's all about gifts, so they say. Right? Well, he's offering you the biggest gift you could ever get. It has eternal, eternal value or consequences. That's free. All it takes is for you to understand that you're a sinner, you're a wrongdoer, you're an evildoer, you're a trespasser, you're a violator, you're an offender against the almighty, holy, and just God. You see, when you violate, say, a city municipal, you get a little fine for the consequences. Then when you violate against, say, the county, that's a little more, and then you get some jail time up to a year and a big penalty. And then when you can can, uh, when you make a mistake and commit a crime that's against a higher authority as in the state of Texas, it's a felony and you can go away for life or death. But when you commit a crime for God, there's only one punishment. That's eternal damnation. There is no get out of jail. There is no get out of... It requires you to bow your heart, submit your will to a holy God and beg Him for mercy and grace of which he will freely give when you're sincere.